Today in our hot seat, we've got Astrid von Rossum. She's the CEO at Global Talk. So hi Astrid, good to have hi. you here. Good to, good to be here. So are you ready for this? Shall we get going? Yes, I am. Let's go. Welcome to C-Suite Hot Seat, the show where we put C-level executives from language service providers of all sizes in the hot seat. We will ask tough questions and get inspired answers. Our hosts today are Nimsi's Inga Boonin, VP of Consulting, and Sarah Hickey, VP of Research. So Astrid, in just one sentence, can you tell us what Global Talk actually does? We help people understand each other by providing interpreting services and cultural services to all kinds of customers. Was being the CEO of Global Talk the first career that you dreamed of having as a kid? <laughs> or what was it that you would? No, I never, never thought of it. <laughs> well, to be honest, um, the first thing I wanted to be was a police officer, a detective, mm. actually, oh. because I, I was in love with this series of books about a Dutch, uh, an Amsterdam uh, detective. So I wanted to, you know, be, be that as well. What was yeah. the name of the book? Uh, Baantje. It's, it's a complete series yes. about an Amsterdam detective who works cool. in the red light district uh, of Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Super famous yeah. and super cool. I mean, for those who know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're not working, are you still doing some detective work or are you still <laughs> reading uh, Adventures uh, novels? Uh, no, uh, no. I'm, I'm sad to say that I don't read that much anymore. I don't find the time to, to read or the peace of mind to start a book. But I, uh, well, when I don't work, I spend a lot of time in my garden. Uh, I have oh. quite a big garden, so it also needs a lot of time. Uh, and um, well, I exercise some, uh, not that much, but, uh, you know, I have to because, you know, I also <laughs> like good food, so I have to exercise. <laughs> and um, uh, I recently started playing the flute again. So, you know, making music, oh. it, it really makes me quite happy, uh, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice way to relax. Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh. Music. Yeah, yeah. And is it then classical music that you play? Or? Yes, mostly classical music uh, at this moment. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I didn't know that I really loved it. It was something I did as a child and I didn't do it for, I think, over 30 years, to be honest. Oh. And I started again and it's like riding a bike. It's, it's, you, don't, you, you can do it instantly again. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really nice. If you had the chance and things were normal, um, which would be the, the three different countries that you would choose to go to? Top of my list would be Iceland. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, I really would love to go to Iceland, see the, the lights and, you know, the nature and the, the hot springs. And I, mm -hmm. it's, it's not that far away, actually, but I've never, I've never done it. Uh, and uh, but also on the, the other side of the world, Japan, something okay. so different from from where I live in our country, of course, and maybe Africa. I've never been to Africa mm -hmm. as well. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? That you don't have to have an opinion on everything. You know, we are brought up to have opinions and to you know express those opinions all the time and then one time somebody said to me but you don't have to express them and it sounds a bit silly maybe but if you don't have an opinion on something then you are more able to listen to other opinions to be honest and that is it's very refreshing to have a discussion on a topic and say i don't have to have this opinion Mm -hmm. You know, it's really refreshing. Try it sometimes. It's a, <laughs> it's really nice. Just just I listen to the different opinions of other people and say, well, yeah, it can be either way. It's fine. I'm curious, Astrid, um, in your career, what was your first um, breakthrough? Like, did you have a moment that you can recall? Actually, it was in my first job. It was a research company I worked at and it was this big project. And I did it all by myself. And it kind of broke me uh, because it was too big. 
to do by myself. So for me, that was a really great uh, and big lesson that asking for help, uh, letting other people you know, join responsibility and do things together. I think that was my first breakthrough to be, you know, to, to realize that I was going to grow if I was going to be able to let other people join the project or, you know, share mm -hmm. the, the tougher things and the responsibilities with me instead of just showing everybody that I was able to do it on my own. Along the way, can you recall uh, something that you would say was like your biggest failure or your biggest mistake and what you learned from it? The moments where I was not able to listen to my gut feeling. And I made a decision purely based on numbers or evidence around me. Mm -hmm. uh, when my gut feeling said to me, maybe it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And in the first years, I was not really able to, to act on that, to act on that feeling. I learned to listen to it and take it into consideration. And, you know, not only um, rely on numbers or evidence mm -hmm. to make a business decision. Success can mean something very different um, for every person. So I'm curious, um, what does success mean to you? To me, success is feeling I have an impact on other people around me and that I can facilitate them in doing their work. Aside from profitability, what are the three main things that you spend your time on at work? I don't spend that much time on profitability, to oh, be honest. Okay. <laughs> I spend time on people and culture and um, uh, strategy, of course. So, yeah, most of my days are filled with mm -hmm. talking to my management team, uh, how they are doing, how their projects are doing, how their team members are doing. Can we, as I said earlier, if you if you facilitate people, then the results will follow. Mm -hmm. If people are happy with doing their job, then the results will follow. Uh, so I spend most of my time on that and also, of course, on creating the strategy um, and shaping the strategy of the organization. But that's also mm -hmm. talking to a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I feel like this is already giving me a hint for the next um, question I have. But um, what is your like leadership style and what makes you, in your opinion, a good leader? Well, I think it's up to others to say if I'm a good leader or not. But uh, when it comes to leadership style, as I said earlier, it's about making other people uh, able to grow and to shine. Uh, I think I, I personally, I do not have that uh, ambition to be in the spotlight directly. You know, mm -hmm. I'm in the hot seat right now, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, but uh, in general, I like to put other people in the spotlight. And I think that is uh, what a leader should do, you know, make other people shine in order for mm -hmm. them to do their work. And then, as I said, you will you will be successful. Well, maybe another thing uh, from me, I am good at creating an overall picture, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important as a leader as well. That That's something you can do. What was the biggest challenge that you ever had to overcome? It has to do with being able to uh, how do i say that uh, in english letting go uh, and mm -hmm. giving uh, delegating maybe that's a better word mm -hmm. you know being able to delegate and really give the other people responsibility of things that first maybe you were responsible of yourself mm -hmm. and just you know accepting that they do it in their own way it's not your way but it's you know as even as good as it as your own way um, I think in more than one occasion, that is something that I really had to, you know, overcome and accept and be at ease with that somebody's taking over my job mm -hmm. and they're going to do it differently. Uh, and that's good, good enough, or <laughs> maybe even better in some occasions as well. Do you have a pet peeve when it comes to clients? No, no. I love talking to clients, you know, well, no. Uh, to be honest, if, if there's a client that's only happy and has nothing to say, then I get a bit bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's maybe, but you know, no, I love talking to them. I love hearing what they, how they use our services, what they think we can do to improve it or, you know, anything. Yeah. Was there ever something that you would describe was a big waste of time? Like something that you put a lot of effort into and it turned out to be a bit, big waste of time in the end. And like, what was the outcome there? To be honest, 
no, because of course there were things that we tried in the past that did not have the results that we wanted. So mm-hmm. we, you know, we pulled the plug on it. But that is that is uh, how you do business. It's part of doing business that there are things that are not successful. There mm-hmm. have to always be things that are not successful in order to grow and find the things that are successful. So I cannot say that that would be a waste of time. How do you motivate your team? I believe that as a leader, you don't motivate people. People are motivated to do their job. Mm-hmm. So uh, you, you, the only thing you have to do is talk to them about them. What motivates them? Uh, what do they need uh, to be successful in their work or have fun in their job, which is also very important, I, I believe. And if you can then facilitate them, then motivation will stay. So it's not something Absolutely. that I say or do. It's, motivation is something from within. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs uh, starting their own business in the language industry today? Well, first of all, be authentic, be yourself, you know, don't be something that you're really not as a person. And uh, I would say for this business, find a niche, Mm -hmm. find a niche. Yeah. Don't do what everybody does. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, and, And thank you also for joining us in the hot seat. And we hope that you didn't sweat too much. It's winter, so it's okay. you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was okay. It was okay. It was nice, nice to be here and talk to you. Yeah, definitely. If anyone else feels like letting off some steam and you're part of the C-suite at a company in the language services industry, do sign up with us if you dare to sit in our hot seat. Yeah, and for the viewers, this was it for today. Thank you so much for watching or listening and watch out for the next episode that will be published as a video on Multilingual TV and as a podcast on the NIMSI website. We'll see you there.